Hello everyone, I'm back here today with another video because Polycam has just released a new feature which is to scan to CAD and scan to floor plan instantly and today I will be testing it out on this restaurant so follow me inside. This update is based on the room plan API that Apple made available a couple of months ago. It requires an update to iOS 16 which means that for now it only works on LiDAR enabled iPhones. The release of the new operating system for iPad is expected to come sometime next month. I will be testing three things. How to scan with the new interface and then I will check the accuracy of the output when compared with reality. And finally I will test importing the 3D models to Blender to inspect them further there. Since it's my first time using the Room Plan API, I'm a little unfamiliar with how to perform the scan. Let me know in the comments if you have any tips or good resources for best practices for Room Plan capturing. I ended up using the same technique as we recommend for capturing raw LiDAR scans. This is how the new interface looks like in Polycam. It is the third capture method that Polycam is releasing. LiDAR mode was released in 2020, photo mode came out in 2021 and now today we also have this room capture mode. We are big fans of Polycam, but this video is not sponsored by them and we are not affiliated by them or any other reality capturing company. Here is a list with the findings that stood out for me today. It is hard to track your progress when compared with the raw LiDAR data capture mode in Polycam. Elevations and steps on ground level are not captured. Diagonal things and other irregular shapes like sloping ceilings are not captured either. And posts and pillars are missing from the final CAD file. Window dividers and other details around doors and windows are usually missing. And it, there are general issues with architecture that is not typically shaped. A place like this one with lots of windows and reflective surfaces will of course have more of these issues that we have seen before with reflective surfaces. Separately I tested scanning staircases which doesn't seem to work at all. Stick around and you can see more details about that later in this video. There was also some interesting findings and little surprising results of the measurement accuracy test, both for smaller rooms and for larger spaces like this. Here is the final output. You can toggle between furniture and measurements on and off and export it in multiple file formats. It's also possible to process a raw LiDAR model based on the data that you captured in room mode. There is a notable difference in the file size between the raw LiDAR data and the instant CAD 3D model. The LiDAR zip file is a little over 9 megabytes, but the scan to CAD model is only 3 kilobytes when it's exported. Optimized models like that are more suitable for Web3 use than the heavier raw LiDAR model. Now I'm gonna go a little bit more into the details of the issues on my list, starting with the staircases and ground level steps and elevations. The area on the far right hand side of the screen can be seen in the raw capture to be lower than the indoor floor. This is not reflected in the instant CAD model which has everything on the same level. I went further with this particular test by scanning the staircase in my house in room mode. As you can see it does not register the steps at all. It looks like the tracking is off and it also misses to capture the ceiling box above the stairs and other changes in elevation and geometry in this area. When I go higher up you can see that the little preview of the CAD model is missing the staircase completely. It doesn't register the doors here on the second floor either and uh, everything about this model is pretty much incorrect. Here is the final result of the capture and in a situation like this it's great that you can reprocess the data into a LiDAR model which includes the missing data. 
Next is the issue with diagonal and irregular shape. This section of corner windows does not register at all in the CAD file. The same goes for the sloping ceiling which has a height difference of 1 meter. The regular floor to ceiling windows seen here extend the full length of that wall, but only about half of them were captured. The pillar, visible here in the raw LiDAR model, is also missing from the processed CAD model. For the measurement accuracy test, I captured the actual measurements on site with a laser and brought the models into Blender to examine them more in detail there. I measured the same walls inside Blender and here is the comparison. When I switch to the CAD model, you can see that the measurement doesn't match 100%. Adjusting them according to the CAD file gives these results. My conclusion for today's test is that I need to learn more about how these automated CAD models can be more useful. It's possible that I'm missing something and I will continue to test to export more formats and using other CAD tools. Let me know what you think about these results and it would be interesting to learn if you are using this for something already today. Since the name of the capture mode is Room, I of course also wanted to test it out in a more regular shape and smaller space. Optimized and cleaned up CAD 3D models are great to have, especially for renovation projects or messy spaces like this one. The room has posts in all four corners and they cause issues. You can see on the lines that the posts seem to be confusing the app and they also don't appear in the preview. I'm finishing up the scan here and this is the final result. It has captured the windows, the door, the two shelves and both desks and even the chair. However, it's missing the posts in the corner and that's not a good sign at all. It tells me that the measurements probably will be inaccurate. I reprocessed the same data using LiDAR mode and imported them to Blender for comparison. I'm measuring one wall to around 280 centimeters and the other one around 287. So now let's compare that with the raw LiDAR data. You can see the more detailed and heavier model and when I zoom in you can also see that the measurements are no longer lining up with the model. So I re-measure it and there is a surprisingly large difference for such a small space. The LiDAR model is 14cm wider and 17cm longer than the automated CAD 3D model, which is about the same size as the posts which are causing these issues. With the raw LiDAR data, you can also pick out the posts in the corners and measure them with precision. We are moving on to compare these two models with the ground truth measurements. Having tested a few beta features in similar reality capture apps and do-it-yourself floor plan apps, I'm not so surprised about the measurements being around 95% accurate. This is the first generation of apps built on Apple's Room Planner API and they will likely become better in the future. Based on what I have seen so far, I don't think that this will be good enough for renovation, designers, architects and engineering professionals, but it can for sure be a lot of fun for some people to play around with colors, interior design ideas, furniture and initial construction and renovation plans at the very early stage where accuracy isn't so important. I'm not aware of features like that within Polycam at this point, but I think that everyone can see that the development downstream from this Apple Room Plan release will be apps like that that allows you to test out wall decorations, furnitures, floorings, wall materials, and everything happening in real time. And while we wait for everything to be fully automated, we are a team of humans that are ready to help you with your scan to cad project right now. 
check out the other videos on our channel if you like this one and consider subscribing if you're interested in reality capture with consumer electronics. Find prices and more information at www.lidar3d.io or email us directly at contact at lidar3d.io. Thank you very much for watching this video.